So we have Sun Fury out now. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, and it also looks especially good for fire. And perhaps not surprisingly, it looks a little poorly designed for Arcane, which is probably why I'm going to focus a little bit more on. I mean, I'll talk about the fire stuff, but I'm going to focus about how poorly it's designed for Arcane, I suppose. Um, right off the bat, we just have these spheres that are generated when you consume Clearcast, you consume Hot Streak, different amount of times for both the specs, because Arcane consumes Clearcast less than single target and far less than AoE. This is actually a major red flag here because um, this has the same exact issue as Arcane's current tier set, and that Arcane does not consume a lot of clear casts in AoE. Um, and this requires, so yeah, Fire is going to way more consistently prop this, and so it's that's just a lot better for Fire. And we're going to see that trend as we go through this tree is that a lot of these things are just really poorly designed for Arcane. So this probably needs to be also consuming Arcane charges. Um, and then maybe you can, like, say every, like, 16 Arcane charges consumed or something. Who knows? But yeah. This does not really work for Arcane in AoE. They do some things in single target that could make the clear casting work though, but again, it's going to be weird. So now we have consuming this sphere causes your next Arcane Blast or Arcane Barrage or Conjuring one, sorry, to deal increased damage. Um, this is going to be purely passive because it's based on consuming and it's every four clear casting or six hot streak. So with Arcane, you could maybe line this up uh, in, in some manner. Um, if you're like at a range to like use clear casting the barrage on the last stack of radiant spark or something uh, if you're far enough away but for fire you know it's every six times you consume hot streak so you will not be able to line this up with for skb then we have glorious incandescence where consuming you know burden of power which is the thing we just looked at uh causes your next arcane orb or phoenix flames called down a storm of meteorites the meteorites either reduce the cooldown of fire blast or they reduce the cooldown of arcane orb and generate an arcane charge this is pretty good for fire uh but has a lot of problems with for arcane right because first of all it's the first target damages arcane orb passes through a lot of targets so it's going to hit the one on the edge of the group versus phoenix flames is going to hit the one in the middle of the group um it's causing them to generate an arcane charge but we literally just Arcane Orbs. I think it's delayed enough that you could barrage and then it could probably generate arcane charges and you could barrage again because there's eight meteorites so you'd be generating a lot of arcane charges. So theoretically every time you arcane orb in this case you'd be able to do three barrages. Um, the other thing is this is based on the cast of arcane orb but right now you know when you cast arcane orb just one of the things for casting arcane orb is it generates an arcane charge right? And then after you cast it, when it hits a target, it also generates an arcane charge. Um, or barrage does generate the initial arcane charge from you casting orb. So this might work with orb barrage because, you know, technically from what we've seen from the game, it counts generating orb barrage as casting arcane orb. Otherwise, you wouldn't generate that initial um, arcane charge. If you ever used the weak aura um, that Pora made. this so this what this does is it shows you if you should barrage again when your orb barrage procs and the way it's able to track this is because it tracks the arcane charge that's generated by your arcane orb being cast but it's generated when you're already at four arcane charges because you're about to barrage basically so hopefully that makes sense essentially um orb barrage counts as a cast so this might work with orb barrage if it does work with orb barrage then you know there's a chance like you have a full arcane orb cooldown already so it's not very useful anyway We'll see. Um, Spellfire Steers can now stack up to five times. So that's making it so you have a 20% damage amp instead of a 12% damage amp. Or generate, you uh, generate a Spellfire Spear while your Phoenix is active. Wait. Oh, generating while it's active because it's casting an exceptional spell. That's, we'll see. That's like a tuning thing. Um, I would assume like Rondomancy is a little bit better, but especially for Arcane. So let's go down the middle so we actually understand what the spheres do. Basically, when you cast Surge or Combustion, you summon a Phoenix. It says Arcane Phoenix. It looks like a Fire Phoenix. You can watch Preheat's video if you want um, on it. So it's very thematic. And it just casts random spells for your spec during your main cooldown. And it will also consume your Spellfire Spheres to cast an exceptional spell, uh, which isn't really defined outside of what the talents change it to be. So yeah, kind of cool. You just have a phoenix casting random spells at people, um, and it consumes these spellfire spheres, which means 
the more you have, the more exceptional spells, which can be powerful ones, it casts. So you can, if you have like extended time between cooldowns, like your cane can, then second this up to five times, it might be possible. In that case, you have more exceptional spells for it to cast. Um, Ignite the Future is probably a lot better for fire than it is for arcane. Because for fire, you can like fireball, fire blast, combust, pyro pyro, right? And you're already a third of the way to generating a sphere and causing it to cast an exceptional spell. With arcane, that's not the case. It's a lot harder for arcane to consume for clear casting in their short span of arcane surge versus arcane. Um, also worth noting, this says cast arcane surge or combustion. So this is not anytime you are in it. So it should only be with your main cooldown. Next, we have a uh, change to our exceptional spells and that the Phoenix has a chance to cast Gravity Laughs, which is the bottom thing, or Supernova as an exceptional spells and will periodically spell steal buffs from nearby enemies. This is a DPS boss, uh, almost certainly. Um, it's a, a utility talent that would cause you to do less damage with your Phoenix, but it would do a lot more CC and it would like, you know, spell steal buffs from people. So it's really good for PP probably. Um, and then this is a choice note, right? So the other option is instead of having your Phoenix cast this stuff, you replace your blast wave with gravity laps, where you just knock up, I guess, three nearby targets and hold them in there. Well, your target and two other nearby enemies. Um, so this is just a really good CC spell. It's kind of like a stun, I suppose, if it's, they're suspended in the air. This has a couple issues, namely that the choice is either you fully replace blast wave or you take a DPS loss. And there might be a lot of situations where you might not want to replace blast wave because this is a three target capped spell and blast wave's uncapped AOE or not AOE really, but uh, CC. So this is capped CC or a DPS loss. And there's no way for you to take uncapped CC and not have a DPS loss really. So that could be concerning for Mythic Plus. Then we have summoning your Phoenix, grants you a Spellfire Sphere. So, you know, whenever you cast this, you get a Sphere. I don't think this can, I don't know if this can like overcap you or anything, but it'd be cool if you had like a temporary overflow for this because you're the only way to consume them is your Phoenix casting it. Um, it's pretty likely you're going to have max Spellfire Spears anyway, unless you take the 5 one uh, every time you do it. But And then it can also now cast Greater Power Blast or Arcane Surge when casting an exceptional spell, which is pretty cool. But again, you know, since this is a can now, it means that if you take Lessons in Debilitation, you're just diluting the pool of exceptional spells that can cast, so it won't cast the strong ones. Um, or it might not even cast these, right? It's very RNG, which is a little weird. So... Then we have, while well, Kane Phoenix is active, you gain twice as many stacks of mana addiction, which is over here, which is just gives you haste when you consume your buff. Uh, but we'll go down that. And then when your Phoenix expires, it empowers you, gives you a soul, um, which is increased for each exceptional spell it casts. And the souls for fire gives you hyperthermia, which is very strong, right? You, in combustion, immediately have hyperthermia for, you know, six to six plus seconds, really. Um, for Arcane, <laughs> it's six, six seconds or so or more right you can have like you know potentially up to like um if you have the five spells and you generate like one during then it, it would be like nine seconds of it it's arcane missiles has a hundred percent chance for clear casting um we're not really incentivized it's actually bad to chain cast arcane missiles especially if you don't have touch the magic active which you wouldn't hear so you wouldn't be benefiting from your arcane echoes proccing all the time so this is really weird, because obviously between your arcane missiles, you want to be pressing arcane blast, and even though it has a 100% chance to proc clear casting, it's not like we really, really want to cast clear casting. Uh, so this is kind of strange, because the hyperthermia one is way, way better. And the other thing is this does literally nothing in AoE for arcane, right? For fire, it's like, oh, combustion ends, I just spam flame strike in AoE. For arcane, it's like, oh, I just finished my major cooldown, let me spam arcane missiles in AoE. You know, that doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit weird. Don't know what they're thinking about with that. But obviously, we kind of illustrate there's a lot of problems on this tree for Arcane. So, going over here, we have Mana Addiction, where, you know, consuming your, your procs just gives you haste that it says multiple instances may overlap. So, it's not like a something you just maintenance buff. It's like something that you would, you're trying to micromanage a little bit um, and that you want to. You know, I guess make sure that you're not casting something if you don't have to uh, in the last like second. Well, it's multiple instances may overlap, so they're probably separate instances. I don't know. I, I don't know about alpha access, so I can't test it. Anyway, this just exists, uh, and it'll be good because you get twice as many stacks when you're in your cooldowns. So you're gonna have a lot of haste, which is actually a big problem because we already have temporal warp, 
and now you're getting way, way more haste, right? So this gives you twice as many stacks. And if you're going to have like two clear castings, boom, now you have 12% extra haste already. Plus your, I mean, that's just, that's a lot of haste. Uh, you really need to remove Temporal Warp, by the way. That, like that needs to just go away, but that's good. Then we have this, where when your barrier breaks, you get 5% avoidance, or you have 5% avoidance while active, and 5% leech when it breaks or expires. That's kind of good to get 5% avoidance while active. That's pretty nice. Uh, and then we have this choice node, which is basically when you cast Arcane Surge or Combust, its duration is extended for each, or by 0.5 seconds for each Spellfire Sphere you have, up to 2.5 if you have 5 from that choice node before. Uh, or you can increase your execute. For Arcane, this means your bombardment damage is increased to 130% instead of 100. Uh, and for Fire, it means that you now can execute below 35%, which is like a 17% increase in your execute window, right? Going from 30 to 35%, um, which is has a lot more impact for Fire than it does for Arcane, right? Because Fire, you get the you know permanent um, mobility, right? You get your uh, improved Scorch up time as well. And Arcane just gets 30% damage on Barrage, which Barrage is not, you know, crazy. Um, so Overflowing Power, especially, would also be a little bit more significant for Arcane, because they should have lower Arcane surge up time, too. So, yeah. We'll see about this one. Anyway, overall, it looks fun. looks very good. It just has a lot of problems for Arcane that, you know, like Frost, or sorry, Spellslinger solved a few problems for Arcane, and this doesn't solve any of the problems for Arcane, right? Because if there was already a way for us to generate clear casting AoE, then this would be good. Um, but there's not without Splinter Storm or anything. And the fact that this causes your Arcane Orb to call down a storm on the first target damages rather than the person you're targeting is a little bad. Um, the good thing is for Gravity Lapse, it is on your target. So you can target it. You don't have to like worry about it not hitting the person you want to CC. It's just it, it's really essentially a single target CC and you're kind of ignoring the other two ones because you can't predict who it's going to be on. So yeah, hopefully that was a good overview kind of, of like, you know, the big problems this has or some of the theory crafting, I guess, for what's, what's to come. Um, the next thing I'm probably going to do is I'll probably make a video on this. I, I guess I'm going to get this in the comments. It's just like the data mine class changes for the mage for the new thing, uh, which seems like it would probably be changing the, them changing the talent tree a lot, uh, or part of this is probably also going to be, um, you know, some of our tier set effects for the first season, which we don't know yet. So yeah, look forward to that as well. All right. Let me know any comments, questions down below.